I grew up as a small lad from about the age of seven within the sound of Highbury Stadium yeah. and I was about 10 or 11 when I was first taken there. So I grew up with that passion for football and the excitement and drama of yeah. the game. And so, you know, the same passion is what goes into my work. I love football, I love my pots. And, um, and that, that comes through. And of course, with, with that passion comes a passion and a love of colour. You know, I mean, you look around my house and it is full of colour. Um, and I love colour and I love using colour. So the break, the break from the traditional browns, golds, greens, honey colours, um, where I had a very limited palette, if you like, wasn't difficult. Mm. Especially that I could see in the mid-80s that colour was going to be the next thing in contemporary British ceramics. So it wasn't difficult. The difficulty was, how am I going to use those colours? And of course I started off trying to sort of emulate <coughs> Picasso, you know, Picasso ceramics. Because I mean, Picasso wasn't a potter. And, um, and I realised that, you know, Picasso was a great painter and trying to do anything that looked simple like that was a waste of time. So then when I discovered Howard Hodgkin and this way of making marks, then the other, the other painters that came on to influence me created what you might call um, an alphabet of marks. Yeah. So when I work now, I have, it's a bit like having a jigsaw puzzle. You've got the pieces, you've got the shapes and the marks, but you don't have a, a finished picture to, to put together. Mm -hmm. It comes from the process of doing it. The, uh, the thrown and altered work was just um, a kind of a phase. I mean, in a sense, you know, I looked at uh, what Wally Keeler was doing with uh, the way he altered his salt glazed pots just by pressing in a, a, a metal ruler or something like that. And I just liked occasionally to, <laughs> to whack my pots with a nice piece of wood and just alter the shape and when it was soft and then just perhaps tap it down a little bit to get a bulge coming out. And this made, you know, when I'm making a, a, a batch of pots, I'd probably make, say, a dozen jugs all the same size. And then by giving them a tap here and there and knocking them slightly out of shape, uh, each one then became a little bit more unique as a pot. Although all of them had a, you know, even if I hadn't done that, you know, they would all have had a different, um, different image on them. You know, the surface, the surface decoration would have been different. Um, and it was fun to do that, you know. I mean, when I used to do demos, it shocked people to see me just pick up a bit of wood <laughs> and then knock it. But, you know, again, you know, I mean, I've, I've looked at, you know, the work of Peter Volkos and people like that, who you could say were abstract, um, abstract expressionist potters. I mean, the painters that were around in America when he was doing that were all the abstract expressionist school.